Borders Railway opens to passengers on September the 6th. It's the longest new domestic railway to be constructed in Britain for over a hundred years. And the importance of this is reflected in the fact that Her Majesty the Queen will officially open the line on September the 9th, the day she becomes the longest serving monarch in history. The stretch of track between Edinburgh Waverley and Tweed Bank covers about a third of the distance of the old Waverley line, which was axed by the Beeching Cuts in the late 1960s. Dr Richard Beeching was chairman of British Railways and the man chosen to reshape Britain's railways and stop the huge financial losses and turn it back into a profit-making industry. One of the most controversial decisions he made was to get rid of the Waverley line. Author and railway expert David Spaven explains the history. The Waverley route uh, began life as a, a branch line from Edinburgh to Hoyke in the mid-Victorian period, built by the North British Railway, which then saw it as a launching pad onto Carlisle and the West Coast Main Line south from there. And it became a double-track main line that served a very important purpose until 1923, when it became part of the London and North Eastern Railway, which concentrated on its main line from London to Edinburgh down the East Coast. So the Waverley route found itself some, out on a limb to some extent. And then when Beeching came round in the early 60s, it was seen as a duplicating main line because there already existed a line from Edinburgh to Carlisle via Beatick and Car Stairs. So the Beeching, the Beeching report spelt the end for the Waverley route mistakenly because it didn't take enough account of the population that lived along the railway in the central borders. A campaign led by Hoyke citizen Madge Elliott and supported by local politician David Steele failed to overturn the decision. And in 1969, the final passenger train travelled along the line. On board was David Steele. It was very strange because there was a lot of publicity at Hoyk where a mock coffin addressed to the Minister of Transport was put onto the guards van. And then the press all disappeared. They thought, that's it, it's over. And in fact, the real drama was at Newcastleton. Um, and the people of the village were, were uh, standing across the, the level crossing with the gates closed for the train. And I'd gone to bed. I, I was on, in my sleeper. And uh, some of the, uh, it must have been the local station master, I suppose, came along the, the, the track with a lamp shouting for my name. And I heard this, what are they wanting me for? Um, and he said, people are not letting the train through. Would you come and speak to them? So I had to get dressed and come and, and speak from the footbridge. And uh, I thanked them for the day. It was a bitterly cold night. It was January, freezing cold. Uh, and I thanked them for the demonstration and uh, suggested that we should now perhaps leave. And uh, they said, no, we're staying there. And whereupon the, the parish minister, Bryden Maiden, was arrested. And that, of course, really set the cat among the pigeons. There was no way they were going to move. So eventually, I negotiated with the people in the in, in standing on the crossing that if I went to the police station and got the, the minister out with no charges, would they then go? And that, that was agreed. So, so we went to the police station, got him out, and uh, no charges were made against him. As the years went on, there was growing support for a new campaign to restore the Waverley Line back to Carlisle. The campaign for Borders Rail have been at the forefront for this to happen for many years and will not be satisfied until this has been totally achieved. The fruits of their work finally saw a breakthrough in the early part of this century as things began to happen. David Parker. A government working party of the time looked at the Scottish borders and recognised that our road links were poor, we had no rail links at all, and for us to have a much stronger and better economy in years to come, we needed to do something, and the railway was very much the answer. Government then gave us um, significant support and help to do a major feasibility study to determine how best to go forward, and actually after looking at a number of options, including a road building option, the Borders Railway as we know it was born, and, and that was really the reason why the Borders Railway today is being delivered. In 2003, the Waverley Railway Bill was lodged with the Scottish Parliament. It was given royal assent three years later. And in 2008, the Waverley Railway project became known as the Borders Railway. Advance works began in 2010, but the real work started in 2013. Despite the infrastructure being largely in place from the existing Waverley line, 
Vegetation had to be removed. The utmost care was taken to protect environments which were sensitive to the impact of construction work and any protected species living on the railway corridor had to be moved and relocated under special licences. The start of earthworks showed everybody that the Borders Railway really was beginning to happen. And between Heriot and Fowler Hill in particular, along the route of the A7 road, people could see the great transformation in front of their eyes. And for the next two years, they would witness some big changes in the landscape as roads were redirected, rock was quarried and new bridges were built. The largest of these was at the Harden Green Roundabout in Midlothian. Despite all this activity, there were many who still wouldn't believe that the railway would happen. A turning point was when track laying began in October 2014, a huge moment for the railway project. You've just seen the way most railway track is laid these days, but occasionally a more expensive but very efficient way of doing it is employed, called concrete slab track, and the one place on the route where it was used was in the Beauchamp Tunnel. Embankments and retaining walls had to be built, drainage had to be created, pumps needed to be installed and pipes laid. There are 137 bridges the length of the route, of which 42 were newly constructed and 95 needed refurbishment. Bridges had to meet current safety standards and some new roads were put in place. Seven new stations were built along the route, including three in the borders at Stow, Gala Shields and the terminus at Tweedbank. All this cost a lot of money, £294 million at 2012 prices, and the construction part of the operation came in on time and on budget. One of the most iconic structures on the Borders Railway is the Lothian Bridge Viaduct, just a short distance from the brand new Harden Green Bridge. It was built a long time ago, and it's credit to those builders that it was in remarkably good condition, as Network Rail spokesman Craig Bowman explained. Yeah, there was some old ballast and kind of earth that had built up over the, the years, but once we stripped that back, what, what we found was a pretty immaculate bridge. Uh, there's very little work that has to be done to it. Uh, you can see some of the guys working on the bridge at the moment doing some pointing and some masonry work, but otherwise this is a, a, a structure in great condition. Um, it's not far off being able to, to run uh, trains on it once again. Ten new drivers were employed specifically to drive trains on the new railway line. Over 2,200 applied and one of the lucky ones was Stuart Farrell from Selkirk, a mechanic with no previous railway experience. 
I think all the trainees, to be honest, are um, they've no railway experience. Some of them have had their uh, family in the past that have been in the railway, but um, certainly on my side, there's not been anybody in the railway that I know of. Did you believe that 2,000 plus would be applying and you'd be one of the 10? I knew there would be a lot of people that applied for it because it was well publicised, um, but I never thought anywhere near the 2,000 mark. Um, so to be one of the 10 out of 2,000 is um, a, a good achievement. The entire project has come together in a remarkably short time, but it's not been without its critics. Some have called it a waste of money, a white elephant and a Gala Shields railway rather than a Borders railway. Many people from Borders towns such as Jedburgh and Kelso find it hard to get excited about it and future proofing has been a massive issue. David Spaven once again. I do have a concern that in the last couple of years Transport Scotland have taken a rather short-sighted view of the way they should deliver the railway. Originally they were planning 15 and a half miles of double track out of the 30 and a half miles of the Borders Railway from New Craig Hall to Tweed Bank. Now they've pulled that back to nine and a half miles. They're building new road bridges over the railway that will only allow single track rail width. So rebuilding these in the future to double track will be extremely expensive. So I do have some concerns about the way the railway is being delivered. It's always the case if you try to expand the capacity of a railway, we're looking at it in different parts of the country just now, then it's going to cost money, there's no doubt about that. But what we've done with the Borders project is estimated as best we can what we think the likely patronage will be, what the usage will be, what the capacity is and what budget we have. You have to work within those constraints. Uh, but yes, of course, if you want to expand uh, any uh, rail line, then you're going to have to pay to do that. And sometimes, uh, not talking about the borders just now, but other ones you can see you've got to raise a bridge. Sometimes you have to do that for electrification purposes as well. Um, so yes, you have to take those things into account if you want to expand the line. The Borders Railway and how it performs will be scrutinised closely by everybody. The excitement has already begun. With the first train arriving at Galashiel Station, there was an immediate buzz. The first test train created enormous interest as it came through the new route. The first passenger train followed soon after, when driver training commenced. And when these images were shown from inside the train driver's cab, interest reached fever pitch. The new transport interchange has now opened, offering an outstanding facility, linking Galashiels with the other towns in the borders. With journeys of under an hour taking people to and from Edinburgh and the Scottish borders, steam excursions and the huge potential for bringing investment into the area, the Borders Railway is expected to be a big hit. Former First Minister Alex Salmond believes it will be. It's going to be absolutely terrific. And the greatest thing of all is, you know, you take like the West Highland Line, Malik, fantastic. What an experience that is. But you're a day to get there, a day to do that, well worth it and a day to come back again for you from Central Scotland. People can get this in an hour. In half a day, they can experience the full delights of the borders. I think this is irresistible. It's going to be one of the greatest tourist lines in the continent of Europe.